be they do crime. Only shooting stars break the Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm AB the Amazonian, and today I'm doing even more crime with Gonti. Candy Acquisitor. This is one of the commander cards that was brought into Arena so we could brew around some Sultai crime. Now, if you're wondering, why did Gonti go from black to black, green, and blue? Well, according to Gavin, it's because of the card villain as well. It's the only big Sultai crime card, and finally we have an excuse to put it into a deck. This deck is about casting our opponent's stuff from exile. And the way that we do that is by hitting our opponent with a creature while Gonti's in play. Now, in, in multiplayer, Gonti can steal up to six cards in a single combat. That's one for each of your opponents, assuming there's four players, from both first strike and regular damage. Now, because this is 1v1, we can only steal up to two cards. But we can steal up to two by using a tiny bit of first strike using cards like Drena, Liberator of Malakir. And the cards that we steal are forever in exile and we can play them and cast them whenever and we also get a discount on those cards if Gonti happens to be in play. Now Gonti does have the problem of being a five mana commander that doesn't do anything when they enter the battlefield. However, we're in Sultai colors which means that we have absolutely fantastic value cards. The ways that we get damage through because Gonti also requires us to hit our opponents with a creature are a combination of different approaches. We've got unblockable creatures, things like Slitherblade, Futurist Operative, Invisible Stalker, Mercurial Spell Dancer, Suspicious Stowaway, and Cridal. I also have a couple of cards that are just generally pretty evasive cards like Malcolm, Brazen Borrower, and Drana. Thief of Sanity works on both fronts. And Cards that you don't want to block because, well, they'll kill your stuff, like Glissa Sunslayer, and other first strikers or doubles or uh, death touchers like Gaunti are also pretty good in the mix. And we also have Vorinclex and Chaldred. Vorinclex has Trample. The trample damage can go through, lets us steal cards. And Chaldred has Menace. These are also just fantastic cards. I'd say that the absolute most powerful stuff in this deck are things that let us cast lots of our opponent's cards without Gonti needing to be the impetus there. And I found that Xanathar, because this lets us play and cast spells off the top of our opponent's library, with that discount from Gonti, lets us go absolutely wild. I also put a bit of reanimation in this deck through cards like Muldrotha, Virtue of Persistence, which you can also steal from our opponent's graveyard, and Agadim's Awakening, because they're all really, really fun. We're in green. We can also ramp a little bit always good. We've got some mana dorks, we've got some mana rocks, we've got cards like Uro, and we also just have some generally really fun crime cards like Hostage Taker. So we're going to take Gonti into the queue and we're going to play a bunch of our opponent's cards. Existential Crisis is playing Obeka Splitter of Seconds. Obeka is a new upkeep triggers commander and she's pretty darn cool. If she hits you based on her power, they take additional upkeep triggers. Now this is great with cards that maybe make creatures or make your opponents lose life or draw you cards during your upkeep. There are so many cards that are secretly super good with Obeka, Splitter of Seconds. I think she's pretty good, but you have to get the right cards into play first. Now whether that's uh, going to just be some card draw of maybe a Phyrexian Arena, Bitter Blossom making tokens, drawing cards, or getting tempted by the ring, with Call of the Ring, lots of good choices here. Replicating Ring, they are ramping. I could steal a card, I could bounce a card, or I could just play Malcolm. Earlier I play Malcolm the better, since he can just tick up uh, over time. I won't bother holding back Agent of Ruffian, since I think I'm just bouncing this on, the, on this turn. Uh, I will drop Meat Hook Massacre because I think my creatures will be smaller than theirs. I'm going to bounce the ring. Not the call of the ring, the replicating ring. The one replicating ring.
Hi, Obeka. Now I could defend against Obeka. Or we could get silly. I'll drop. Uh, I think suspicious stowaway. I think I should just exile her. I was thinking, like, did I want to attack? It depended on what I drew. You're asking how the games are going. They're going pretty well. Currently recording some Brawl Stars and having a good time with Gonti. As we're told, letting them cast things for free. Oh, this also gets more counters in upkeeps. The surveils in their upkeep. Let's get ourselves our first actual green source. Wow, real green mana. Just like they make... Oh, I love paying life. <laughs> I also love stealing cards. What do you have? Wow, island. I will drop your less good island for my extra special deluxe island. The next thing we discard from Malcolm, we get to cast for free. Uh, we do not want that to be an X cost spell. We want that to be like Sheldred. Yes, they put the uh, they put the precon commanders in arena. And of them, I think uh, the lands one and Gonti are probably the weakest. But they can still have the potential to really go off, which is great. Aw, board wiped. Honestly, you know, that's fair. Let's do little Gonti. OG Gonti, they're here. <gasps> Full disclosure, I don't think this card should be an arena. Secondary disclosure? If you're running Counterspell, you should be running Mana Drain. So, uh, yeah. Counter Spell, get some extra mana. Wouldn't mind that! Ooh, yum, 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 yum. We're gonna get four extra mana. <gasps> Wait, oh my god, how villainous can I be? I have such a wealth of villainy here. QQ, okay. Um, five, nine, thirteen, so ten. Uh, no, yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Not that one. <laughs> yes, let's go! Ugh, now that was some villain as well. I did like also just like, uh, there's, I didn't need to dark ritual. Of course I needed to dark ritual. And uh, this is going to sort of draw me a card. This is actually really good because it um it's going to put cards into exile, which we have at a discount from Gonti. Oh, I'm being asked, why is it mana drain in this deck? Too blue. M moral objection. Oh, they're stealing. Oh, they stole Cridal. I mean, Cridal will protect uh, against this Shuldred. Okay, a bunch of crap's happening. They dropped the Honda of Seeing Winds. It is an upkeep trigger. Got ourselves a fresh hot Lanor Elf. We scry, we scry. Oh, the cards we scry to the bottom get exiled. And we can... Can we play them? Yes, we can play them. Great. I can discard a card. I'm gonna discard this Land War Elf. And Deadly Cover Up. I don't want either. Shuldred. Bye, Cridal. Say goodbye to the Cridal. And I'll attack Bolas. If I had one more mana, then we could flip the Shelly. Oh no, they don't quite have enough things in Graveyard. We're close though. Throw down the Arcane Signet, and I will still have enough mana for Brazen Borrower. 
how did Gonti get multicolor? I feel like the blue kind of makes sense. Gonti, they've always had a kind of criminal background. What with the Aether Heart? And the green is apparently just because of villainous wealth. Astrotold giving them some good free spells, though. Like, uh, Astrotold is actually going to let them cast Obeka for just the, uh, just the tax. Oh my gosh, what a hit! Got Moldrotha off Nicol Bolas's plus. They've definitely got some permanence in Graveyard. Honden of Infinite Rage, Honden of Seeing Wind. Gotta go fast. Rising of the Day. Hey, Obeka. Hey, Moldrotha. Yeah, one of you was free. Mostly free. <laughs> one was four mana. All tax. So they'll get the upkeep triggers here. I can't block. Um, I, I only have one blocker. So, uh, yeah. That's gonna be three additional upkeeps, I guess. So they go bing bong. They get tempted by the ring. They can choose to pay two life. I'm not sure if they will. It's a matter of like how much card draw do you want when you can't cast anything. But you can have something on your opponent's turn. Yeah, they're going down to nine life. I wonder why they're binging Shaldred there. All right, and now that I don't have to worry about this dealing one damage to it, bam! Now they have to discard for my shrine that I stole. They discard it in the gate. Happy to see it. They lose some life. Uh, I will put both of these on the bottom. Because that's free real estate. Gonti. Gonti's going to discount the cards from exile, right? Or is it Oh no, it's only the ones I don't own. Boring. Anyway, I do own this. I just move it out of the way. And swing in for lethal. I did not, I guess, have to move it out of the way because we had Menace. Face damage. Wins the game. GG, Obeka. Reaches the Blast Master. Sorry, Blast Maker. I like Blast Master. Uh, I'll go ahead and mulligan. Oh, they're saying hello. Oh, our horse is crossed. Addy. Uh, Breaches the Blast Master. This is the new one. It's a second spell per turn coin flipper. <laughs> It's great. It either copies the spell or deals damage to any target. Ooh, Emporium Thopters. That's a great way to get a second spell every turn. Hopefully I get another uh, Black Mana Source soon so I can get rid of that. Blast Master sounds cool. Ocean Courier. Whenever it attacks, you either make a tap Power Stone or seek a non-land with mana value equal to the number of Power Stones you control. Ooh. Uh, I think this Meat Hook is going to be the play this turn. We're going to play Cavern, naming Rogue. Dock Ritual. And then Meat Hook for two. I don't really need to do Meat Hook for three. This way, look, if they tax it for one, I could pay the one. I know, playing Gonti would also be cool. If only. 
Yeah, get it, getting rid of this um, creature engine, though, because this is giving them that first spell to cast each turn. It's kind of my goal. I don't think reanimating from their graveyard's a great plan with Tasha. The plus is fine. One ring is fine just because of the protection. Uh, I'll go for Tasha and a plus. At worst, she just eats some removal. Listen, I'll, I'll pay four mana to distract damage from my face. Ooh, they have a one ring. They're shrinking breaches. Didn't have a second spell to cast, though. Keep on plussing! Watch that man shrink! I should probably just tear asunder the one ring. I don't want them drawing that many cards! I'll play these booties. Cute boots. The boots are in here to make Gonti unblockable. Because nobody just has basic lands. Not in this format. Behold the mana. Oh, I think this might be a two spell kind of turn. Because they cast this and then electrolyze. Okay, so they sacrificed an artifact, and they got the damage flip, not the copy flip. I, I'd kind of like some lands first. I don't have double green for you yet. Or you! One ring, draw me, forest! Or like, forest plus. That's a, that's a guy... There's a guy named Urtai. He does do a kill or counter. Please draw. <gasps> green mana! Yes, it comes in tapped, but it's still green mana! Play Uro. Life has been gained. Life has been lost. You demand forest and Urtai pops up like, hey. I'm green. No, you're not. Blue and black. Unexpected windfall. That's their first spell cast. They have uh, sacrificable artifacts, too. Oh, Fomori Vault. They discard a card. And maybe get a card. Wait. No, they definitely get a card. They don't have to reveal an artifact. They just get a card. That's pretty cool. This requires you to have artifacts and discard some good filtering. Oh, who's in graveyards? Who's in graveyards? Okay, Thopter's Courier. Burrow. Reanimate, you you will be used. Don't don't you worry. Kind of expecting him to get countered there. Did not. We'll consider that a very good thing. We're going to bring in one basic, one non-basic. Pop down that. Can you rid me of my Vorin Clex? Please don't. I'd like him for a nice discounted Great Henge, because that will gain me some life to offset how much life I'm going to lose to this one ring. <laughs> Gleaming Gear Drake gets them more artifacts. It also, I think, gets bigger when they sacrifice an artifact. Yep. Oh, second spell was... Prismari Command! They can't choose different modes, but they still get two treasures out of this. They get to draw two, discard two twice. 
Looks like the, uh... Oh, they didn't get the copy flip, though. They got the three damage. The Fortniclex is just reminding them, Hey, reach. Reach, I have it. Can't block the menace, though. Let's draw. Doo -doo. Very good. Lose some life. Play a henge. It's a great henge. It's the best one anyone has ever seen, ever. Right? We all agree. Best henge. Pretty great. Oh my god, I could steal the I could steal the gleaming gear drake. Using the skydiver. That would make me so happy. Mr. Bailey, sir, thank you for the 60 month resub. Oh no! They're raiding the henge! And drawing a card, perhaps doing one damage. Who ended up in their graveyard? Some of this, some of that, some of those. I'm going to play the forest and these boots. And I'm not attacking them because I'd like to be able to block this turn. I think Moltroth is here. Yeah, Moltroth will let me replay the henge. Because she's a good elemental. Also, just I put her in every single Sultai deck. I feel like there's two classes of Sultai players. There's the Sultai players who put Emergent Ultimatum and Combo Win Cons into their deck. And then there's the players who put Muldrotha into their deck. Because they love the graveyard value. Also because they play permanents. Mori Vault's just letting them dig. Make bird big. Make bird big. That was a heads, which means they get two expressive iterations, right? Oh no, that was... That was a tails? I can't tell on your coins. If you'd like to, we could trade. I actually really don't want to trade because I want to steal their gear, their uh, gear drake. Villainous wealth enjoyer. Well, guess what's in this deck? Villainous wealth. Ooh, Flames of Anor. So that's just five damage to Gonti. That will let uh, Breaches swing in. Gleaming Gear Drake getting huge. Move my commander to the command zone. Okay. Trade? Or steal? You all know the answer to this question. Ow. Listen, I'll, I'll get there. Do I have enough mana to get some life? Bro, you'll, you'll help me, right? Right. <laughs> life is a resource. I'm gonna spend every last bit of it. Every single piece. So, right now, this is killing me. Trying to see if there's anything here that would get more into my graveyard. If I reanimate from their graveyard, that would allow me to escape this. But it would also put me at the same life total. Oh, but I, could, I would be able to attack first. Okay, so we're going to grab Ornithopter because it costs zero. Gotta do that crime. Put the boots onto Uro so we can gain more life. Swing in. 12 to their face. We're back up to 9. Yeah, sorry, Great Henge. You were great, but Uro's greater.
Then good game. Nope, they had a they had a lightning bolt. If I didn't gain that much life, I would have been dead. <laughs> GG breaches. GG. Bristly Bill Spine Sower. This is a nice hand. We've got a turn one discard or a turn two discard, depending on how I feel. This is a landfall commander. And a bit of a modify commander. Cares about those plus one plus one counters. Scales. All those things. It's gonna be a bit like Kodama, but more landfally. I'm gonna go for the turn two. It's like I could thought seize them on turn one based on the assumption that they have a uh, big turn one play. But I feel like I can wait. All right, we will get out black and green. Shock it in. Love paying all this life. Very into it. Okay, Tangle Ford Hedron, Branching Evolution, Champion. Hmm. Because I have a board wipe in hand, I think the Rishkar's expertise is what I'm most afraid of. Now, I do have to get double black and up to five mana for this, but we could be pretty obnoxious with the cards we currently have, especially getting this Thief of Sanity. Any of you guys got Reach? Nope. Great. Five life Thoughtseize? Yeah. It's worth it. We start with 25 life for a reason. So Landfall, they're getting a plus one, plus one counter. They can also pay five to double the plus one, plus one counters they've got. Unfortunately, Thief of Sanity cannot steal lands. But it can steal other types of mana. Bristly Bill coming in. Bristly Bill also a little too big for me to kill currently. Uh, one ring, Defiler, or uh, Shadow Sphere. Not a Shadow Sphere. Shadow Spear's tasty. I think the One Ring also would have been a good play. If I didn't already have a turn four play I wanted to do, which is exiling Bristly Bill, I think I would have gone for it. And that's assuming, of course, that I get a land. All the way up to six, since I get double the counters with Branching Evolution. Bitter Triumph, that's more removal. Bristly Bill getting beefy. It is three lands. Um, this is just a matter of what lands am I willing to put into their graveyard. I'm going to exile the... Um, I'm going to exile the one that gives them two landfall triggers. Champion a lamb holt. That any more lands. There's one. I'm putting it on... Putting it on her. Cool. discard a card. I'm gonna drop the boots. I don't think unblockability will be as much of an issue here. I am just not getting lands. Okay, I'll take non-land-based ramp, too. I'll play this Delighted Halfling. And I guess I could play the Operative. It's not going to do anything here, since I can't block. It'll make me feel better. Hi, Bristly Bill! Champion of Lameholt. In the snow-covered forest, each getting plus two, plus two with this bristly bill. And that's going to be over lethal damage. GG, bristly bill! You had that good, good green stuff. Omnath, Locus of the Royal. This is the landfall draw card, growing elemental Omnath. Also deals damage based on the number of elementals you have when it enters the battlefield. It only starts drawing cards, by the way, when you have the uh, optimal number of lands, which is like eight or more. You get there pretty fast when you're all about land-based ramp. I've got a Delighted Halfling to start, and also, my opponent's name, Sixth Sense. That's the name of a magic card. A magic card that would be pretty good in this deck. 
Uh, I'm actually not running any sixth sense type of cards, but I do think that they're good in a build like this. I know this is kind of weird. I'm going to reanimate my delighted halfling. Could I wait for this to be something big and scary? Yes, but also this is the only source of blue mana I have right now. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to be able to use it for Cridal. Ooh, we also have this tireless provisioner. Pop down that. Get me another blue source. A delectable treasure. And then play Cridal. Three mana. Make it four. Oh, breeding pool. And a cultivate. More more mana. I wonder why they shot this in. Oh, maybe it's for counter spells? I don't know. I have a delighted halfling. Treasure. Make sure it's using the halfling. It is an uncounterable gaunty. Go to combat. Swing in with both. We will make the cridal unblockable. Uh, if they'd like to, they can block the tireless provisioner. They do not want to. So we steal a card, mill a card, land a war loam speaker on top of my deck. Don't need a land a war loam speaker. Throw it in the trash. Uh, since we have this and we can cast it, we're going to cast the into the north. Wait, I don't have snow lands. <gasps> Amy! You don't have snow lands. Yeah, I should have cast a Agent of Rafian. I forgot. <laughs> I'm so used to all my black decks being blood on the snow decks that it's like very second nature to me now. Uh, they are short of mana for a Cyclonic Rift. I'm still going to swing in with all of these. Cridal Unblockable. It's no problem. Oh, it's Sarak! Love that guy. So they're going to kill for Gaunty. But we still get to steal. And mill. Ooh, we milled a time warp. Okay, virtue. I like virtue. I stole a land this time. Speaking of lands, I could play it or I could play this. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to go for you. The one ring! To not be cast with a delighted halfling, even though it's legendary. That at least me a little less mana to you for my cool spells. That's fine, I'll play the Agent of Rafian. I know, it doesn't automatically do it for Legends. You have to manually get that out. Genesis Ultimatum, up to the top five cards of their deck into play. Let's see what kind of permanents they got. I think one's a clone, because I see them targeting their own stuff. Ah, no, it was Utopia Sprawl. I do have a... Uh a deck for Sarek. It was really fun. Seiju! Some of this, some of that. Hitting the Aftermath Analyst before they could sacrifice it and get all those lands out of the graveyard. I'll steal the card because that's what we do. Hmm. Not for this turn, but certainly for next turn that's a possibility. I don't really want it this turn. I will swing in with the Tireless Provisioner and make it unblockable. That's just to do a little bit more damage. Cridal technically does two damage because of this extra ability. Nice. Green Warden lets him replay all these from the graveyard. Also doubles landfall abilities, such as drawing cards. This also an elemental! Deal two damage to the Tireless Provisioner. You know, maybe I could have gone for Pock because we could have made Pock unblockable. Oh, <gasps> unblockable. I'm sorry. I also like Surak Dragon Claws Commander. The this spell can't be countered. It's just beautiful. Other spells not being countered? Beautiful. And Trample's nice too. My god, there's so much. So much happening. 
So many cards. Enabled Passage, getting them even more landfalls. A big Omnath and a big Ancient Green Warden. They might have to discard. They were too good at getting cards into hand. Now, do I want to steal? I think Pock. Pock will be better. I'm going to swing in with just these two. Rida will make himself unblockable. Three damage dealt. It's a Tasha. Not really what I want right now. Uh, the counterspell they would play for just one blue is not the one I really have to worry about. And rather than hold back defenders, I'd rather try to steal land. Got a land. Comes into play. We get two of them. The second one actually comes in untapped. Asks, do I want to put reanimate back on top of my deck? Mmm. Do I? Sure. Sure, I'll take a reanimate. <laughs> Clammy Inquisitor? No, Canny Inquisitor. Don't worry, I've got the ultimate answer. I can make them sacrifice their arboreal grazer. There's a definite chance that they could get lethal this turn. Nice. Just by, like, virtue of big boy. Ah, Cyclonic Rift! I have to sacrifice this token anyway. Die, Arboreal Grazer! Excuse me? Um. Pardon? Are they at lethal? I think they're getting there. Nice lethal six cents, GG. Extus, Auric Overlord. Sacrifices creatures to get out the blood avatar. Very hardcore sounding name for a very hardcore token. And that token is a pretty spooky one too. Um, I feel like it's the, the sort of thing that you really don't want to see because it makes you take damage. And when it enters the battlefield as part of this uh, whole spell, you have to sacrifice a creature. I do want to do crime. I'm going to play this Cavern of Souls. I'm going to name Rogue because it is the most common creature type, I believe, in the deck. But the important thing is I've got two colorless mana, which lets me steal from their library. Most Exodus decks, by the way, they never actually cast the front side of the deck. It's only the back side. But the front side's kind of cool, too. This is really just a token sacrifice deck. Soldier's Edict. Okay, so they're going to make me kill my Agent of Rafin. I got... Uh, rats. Yum. This is an instant, right? Uh, I am going to hold this because having the rats is really good for, like, having things to sacrifice. Oh, rats. Fine, rat catcher trainee. Uh, I could pay some life and get out Tasha here. That would certainly discourage them from blocking, but they could also just uh, bring out the Blood Avatar to this turn. Instead, let's go for the Futurist Operative. Ratcatcher Trainee. 
and Zagoth Triome. Primal Amulet. Ooh, lets them eventually start duplicating that spell. Uh, the Blood Avatar, by the way, is not legendary. Why? Great question. But it's not. I want to steal. So we're going to play Gonti this turn. And I'm going to swing in with the unblockable and also the rat catcher because it's first striking on my turn. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll trade. Ooh, what do we steal? What do we steal? What do we steal? Give me the goods. Swamp. Swamp. I want more than swamp. Once this flips over, they can use it to copy spells. Uh, I don't have any good, like, reanimation in hand, so I'll just put that back into the command zone. I don't want swamp. I want my gamer fuel. Play the swamp. Bring out Tasha. I'm going to hold the bind to secrecy. You know? Normally, I'm all about that plus with all these tokens out here. But I want to steal. Give me that seasoned pyromancer. I'm going to be doing some discarding of my own. I'm going to drop Gaunti in the halfling. I'm just chock full of sacrificables. Boom. Not you. Yeah, this one. Here we go. What do we draw? Ooh, Prismatic Vista in the clear water pathway. I'll swing in with, um... Yeah, both. This is unblockable. They are trading. I if they're not planning on awakening the Blood Avatar at all. I will keep Tasha alive because they're not going to be able to afford to awaken the Blood Avatar on this turn. Nice! Red Cap Gutter Dweller comes with a bunch of rats! Me, my rats, and I. Bring out Xanathar and swing in with the operative. They will be able to bring this out next turn. And I think that will be the third of four for this. Not bad. Shocking. They get to decide how much they want to sacrifice if that's what they're doing. If six mana and can cast a seven mana spell, if it's an instant or sorcery. They're just sacrificing the rat. I will sacrifice elemental token. Cool avatar. Bloody good. Now if you want to attack me or Tasha, then you'll get the minus one, minus one. Love it. All right, so we're gonna grab that land we stole. Beedo. Ooh, if I play Gaunti, don't have enough mana for it, but I, I do want this Vito. Uh, return Triumphant. I'm gonna bring back one of these creatures. Oh, and uh, we're gonna win. Because we, we did crime. GG. Tajik, Legion's Valor. An indestructible commander that grows every turn and spits out a creature depending on how many counters he has on him. Um, eventually getting Aurelia and then not getting any more free creatures, but still keeps on growing and is indestructible and hasty and makes hasty creatures. Honestly, kind of a wild card. Um, don't know what they were thinking with this one, but they're getting hot and spicy. Uh, I have an okay hand here. Galissa, not as useful against something indestructible, but if they want to be attacking in, we can turn around to hit them with Galissa and remove the counters from Tajik to make him small and also still spitting out small, less useful creatures. 
that's kind of my hope here. We also have uh, Exiling Removal in this hand, which is very important against a deck like theirs because I can't use a kill spell on Tajik. It doesn't work. Careful Mastery, my beloved. Also Glisten, my beloved. I just love this card. I put it into a lot of decks as just good stuff because that's what she is. She's good. Very good card. Now we've got two of these early lands here, the Blooming Marsh and the Botanical Sanctum, only come in untapped. As long as we have two or fewer of those lands. Hmm, I think Uro first, and then Glissa with the boots. I'll just, I'll just bring out Glissa. If they want to play Tajik here, uh, this will just have them leave Tajik back as a blocker. And we'll get to eat up the Boros Recruit. And then we use our Baleful Mastery on him. Get over here! Very Baleful. Quite masterful. Get out of here! Glissa with the boots with the fur. Ah, and the Tajik player. Not willing to let their commander die once. You got him out early! That's fine! Jadzi, Oracle of Arcavios. Jadzi casts stuff for free. Out of her magecraft ability. Oh, well, I shouldn't say for free. It's for one mana. She puts things into play. She has this ability where whenever you cast her copy in instant or sorcery spell, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's an online card, you may pay it for one mana, rather than its mana cost. Or if it's a land, it just goes into play. Behold, a fetch land into a triome. You could also return her into hand, bouncing some lands. Using this back ability, this card, to protect. Ooh, they ramped. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of ramp in this deck. I think a Signet into Oracle is going to make a lot more sense than Invisible Stalker. Rolling Regrowth sacrifices land to get them two more. Dante in the search for more crime. That's all we're doing. Ooh, Cyclonic Rift. Always nice to have. They know I don't have a land on top of my deck. Ooh, and Jinny Jin Jin! This lets them draw cards when they cast big non-creature spells. He's got a bit of ward, too. Now, do I have anything here that would manipulate the top of my library? I don't. I can steal off the top of their library uh, and hold up some of these other abilities, though. I think that playing something like uh, Invisible Stalker is fine. Set up for uh, an unblockable, hex-proofy little dude. Mind Splice Apparatus! They draw a card. This is going to discount their instants and sorceries. It is Jotzy. Got you yelling Yahtzee out here. Probably should save that for the overload, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to put that back into hand. No delicious oil for you. All right, not a land on top, so we're going to shuffle. Every day we're shuffling. Bow. Ooh, more land. I will play Gaunty. Gone to combat. I may as well use this ninjutsu because it's more fun. Oh, cool. Tail's end. Had I not ninjutsu in, we would be holding it up because it gets a discount from Gaunty. Also, they, they played this, I believe, at Sorcery Speed because they wanted to draw a card off Jin. It does have Flash. Time for combat. Time for more combat.
Ooh, taking damage. Maybe going for a trade. Just bouncing Gaunty is also possible. Ooh, a sublime epiphany. I'm gonna go for an X equals two. X equals three, I think, outrageous robbery. Since that they seem like they have counter spells. I figured there was a chance that I could get like a negate there. I think this should cost zero. <laughs> no, I get why it costs one. Uh, I am going to do this, though. Try and manipulate lands to the top of my deck. Second Jenga Taxis. We didn't find a land. I will drop... Thieving Skydiver, maybe? I mean, I could steal that Mind Splice apparatus. That would make me happy. Would make me happy. I don't think I need a second Tails End, but it would be useful. I'll drop Invisible Stalker. I got other evasive damage sources here. They got the beans! They draw, they keep drawing cards. Gotta have my beans. Ah, oh, hero to you too. They're just about at enough mana for Jodzi. Nice Muta Vault. Ooh, Brawl's Expertise. Going for the big bounce. If I play this, I'll have a land on top of my deck, right? Right? Land? Yes! Not a land. Ooh. I guess I'll play the Signet. I have to discard two. Oh, wait, the Virtue? Do I have a land in Graveyard? Oh, I do! I just want to play all my lands. Uh, Prismatic Vister, Bloodstained Mire. Uh, I'll, I'll go for a basic, I think. Mr. Vista. Play it. Shuffle the earth tie away. Get some of that good blue stuff. I am now holding a wash away. I'll drop the virus beetle. And... Mm, I don't want to drop boots because I have the thief. He makes me so happy. <laughs> the tail's end. They'll never suspect that I have their tail's end. <laughs> This is face up, and these two are face down. I like it says private information. Oh, you tried to flip a token. Doesn't work. You know what? It was a it was a valid choice to try. Um, it is actually a two sided card, but because it exiles, this part of it's flipping over because of the uh. The way that the sagas come into and out of play. Didn't go. Did failed to go. You know what? We all misplay though. I do it, they do it. It's just part of life. Land? Not a land. I'm going to try and steal this cool rock. Okay. Um. You tried to merge Mistra with a dragon token engine once. I've also tried to meld with like stolen cards. It says own and control. Why does it say own and control? Uh, if you make a token copy of a werewolf, it will be able to transform. Now, it didn't used to be that tokens were two-sided. 
it's a, a recent change. They they changed it when the incubate tokens in I think Phyrexia all will be one got introduced. Oh, see double. Uh, the spell might not be counterable, but it is. Or uh, it might be not co copyable. It is counterable. Here we go. Get the C double. Give me your cool rock. Yes. I don't have any mana up, though. Which, uh, hey. Oh, that's gonna be free spells. One with the multiverse lets them cast one thing for free from their hand or the top of the deck per turn. Also, just let them cast spells off the top of their deck. Really great card. Hi, Kellen! They still haven't cast their free spell yet. Hmm, a land. Ooh, another land? Wait. Oh, right, because Kellen's uh, ability lets them play an additional land. More importantly, I stole their cool rock. It's my cool rock now. So the free spell they're casting is draw seven cards. They do still have a maximum hand size, though, so they'll have to discard. Yeah, if, if this becomes a one mana solve the equation, I actually know exactly what card I'm tutoring for, and I'm going to do it this turn. Wait. Oh, no, I'm thinking about the other crime deck I built this week. I will reanimate. Wait, I want that in hand. Anybody cool in your graveyard? Anyone like a Jenga Taxis? Do not try to flip stolen Jenga Taxises. Jins and their taxes. I don't think I have Thought Distortion in this deck, no. But I do have counter spells. And discard spells and kill spells and counter spells again. Ooh, and Villainous Wealth. Oh, I do like Villainous Wealth. I think I just want to, like, tear asunder. Get rid of their, uh, their freebie here. That also shuffled my deck, which means that now I have another land on top. Yippee. Sorry, Gonta, you're staying in hand. And somebody else is going to go back to my hand. We're going to use some ninjutsu with the thieving skydiver. Get a virus beetle. Now, I only need one mana up here, so I think that the Uro is a pretty safe plan. Why would I ever play around them having things? One, two, three, four, five. Click, 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 click. I can leave extra creatures in the graveyard because of reanimate and everything else, but... Cool. Great! I have to discard. I'm gonna drop Malcolm. Why did it hold up black? Uh, because this can be cast for any color. Oh no, it's an Omni! They're saying GG. Well, they can't cast their commander first, so they better have some biggies. Now I can't cast the Tails End because it costs two again. Discovered a formula is going to give them even more cards in hand, and they're already free, but they get even more discounted. Mm hmm. Mind Splice Apparatus. You got some extra turns in there, too. Well, they might get one off this. I did my best to do the crimes I wanted to see in the world. But those crimes weren't enough. Not against, uh, not against free spells. Uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and leave. Bye, Jodzi! I am happy I managed to steal some of their spells, so it made me happy. The first sliver. The first sliver could certainly be a sliver's deck, but it's a lot more likely to be 
five color good stuff. We'll find out as we play against them because they probably got lots of good value stuff that they can cascade into that ramps them up as they play a five mana seven seven and probably some board wipes and a virgin ultimatum. Listen, I've played against enough of these decks that I feel like I've got the general gist of it. Also have all three of the um the slow lands here. Ooh, managed to get something else. I have a Cridal. I guess I'll make Lanor Elf unblockable. Cridal's pretty nice because we can make anything into our unblockable creature here. Whether that's Gaunty or Tasha's reanimated creatures. Lots of choices. Let's get another blue source in. Swing in with Cridal. And I can either hold the counter spell here. Uh, this is only for non-creatures, but they probably have some ramp uh, land. I don't think I need it. I was hoping I would mill a creature so I could reanimate it. Instead, we'll just plus. Gives us protection from the attackers they don't have. And eventually gets us to the minus six where we can steal three creatures. All right. Hey, there's a creature. It's not one that can attack me right now, but it's still pretty cool. And they have left. I think they saw I was about to start doing crime and they weren't here for it. I actually don't think I was going to play Gaunti this turn. I think I would have played Thief of Sanity and held up the bind to secrecy. It doesn't matter though. Still did just fine. GG. Aklazot's deepest betrayal attacks in and makes you discard. If you can't, they draw a card. And if you discard a land, they get a bat. It's also a 4-4 flyer with lifelink that, if it dies, can very easily flip back over as long as your opponent's hand is mostly empty. This is a keepable hand. Um, with this dark ritual, I could either get out Gaunti early or maybe do some crime if they play like an arcane signet on this turn. Um, Mind Stone too. Excellent. You know whose card that is? It's going to be my card. We're going to use Dark Ritual. We're going to play with a kicker of two. We're going to say, oh, what a lovely mind you have. What a thing to waste. We'll take that for ourselves. That gets me closer to playing Gaunti early. Or Scarab God if creatures end up in the graveyard. Creatures like you. Oh, they're making us um, discard and exile. I'm going to drop a land and a land. I know that that's like, you know, frisky risky. But we got lands in this deck. And I really don't want the Scarab God or Xanathar to be exiled because they're such good cards for us. Sign and Blood, they're drawing more cards. Yeah, getting that Scarab God, I think, is going to be my priority over Gaunti. Since this has protection against a lot of types of removal. Oof, but not if the unlicensed curse is in play. Playing Vorinclex fills up my hand. Playing Gaunti lets me steal. Playing Vorinclex also gives me a defense against Aklazots. Since Aklazots has flying and we have reach. By the way, there's this super obnoxious new reach animation in Arena. They're gonna grab the, the two shock lands. Our life total's pretty high. If you are um, defending and you have a creature with reach, it gets these crazy lines and a giant bow and arrow on it. And apparently there's a sound effect too, but I, I can't actually hear it. Um, it's, it's hard to tell because I have a lot of audio filters in place and a very directional microphone. There's very loud construction noise going on. I'm actually wearing earplugs right now and <laughs> doing my best to uh, ignore the sound of the world around me. So let's go ahead and play Rogue here. Playing Gaunti. We have a bunch of rogues in our deck. They can exile things from graveyards. They might have a kill spell. But what I want is to steal. Okay, Infernal Grasp on Foreign Clex. I still get to do crime. Unless they also kill the Skydiver. I have a feeling they will exile the Voren Clex, though. This card, by the way, is exiled face down. They do not know what it is. It's a secret. It's a secret! Okay. 
it, they, they chose to make the hearse bigger instead. Here comes Aklazots. Aklazots is big enough to block this. If they crew the hearse, they could exile something from the graveyard, make this a little bit bigger. Uh, I don't think that that would be the worst thing, but I'd really like some unblockable damage, so I am going to play Cridal. I'll attack in with Gaunty. Put this ability on Gaunty, since that's five damage to the face. Bam! What do we steal? The plunder from down under. I could also have played Scarab God here, but I'd love to either make them double discard or steal a spell from their deck. Okay, so they went for the double discard. I'll go ahead and pop down the breeding pool. That's the turn. You love some crime? Well, that's what we're doing. We're doing crime. I mean, what else is new? It's just what I do here. I'm going to draw a card off their Mind Stone. I'm going to make them lose their mind. Ooh, unblock a booties. I could have two unblockables. I actually don't think that's that important since right now we're pretty big and we have the cridal. So I'm going to drop the boots. Take the four. They'll gain four. They don't have anything to crew the hearse with. <gasps> Ooh, Oracle. Yes, we can play extra lands. Swing in. Throw it on Gaunty. Soul Shatter. I have no Gaunty. Move my commander to the command zone. Sure. <gasps> my cavern. Aww. I guess I'll grab a little bit more black mana. No blue. I have that swamp in exile. Unfortunately, we won't be stealing. I will be milling. We mill the land. Oh, that's a great henge. A very great henge. I don't want to show them that I have the henge. I'm going to play Xanathar in the stolen land. Xanathar, I think, sets up very well here as big boy. Four cards out of the graveyard. They're still hot to Zot. And they know about the Scarab God, by the way. Um, they have seen it. They might want to leave it back just so they have one big blocker, but we have the ability to make something unblockable. Xanathar also prevents them from casting spells on my turn. They could, Okay, they could technically... Cast them in response to me targeting with the ability. Did you know Xanathar commits a crime in your upkeep? Because it targets opponent. Pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Liberto with this Aklazot hasn't found much card advantage. And part of that is that I have not been discarding... Uh, all right, I've always had a card to discard. If we discard lands, they get bats. Oh, to be a giant floating eye that commits crimes. Yeah. And also like a big hedonist with a goldfish that runs an underground crime syndicate. Syndicate? Wow, syndicate. Oh, maybe this is a salt rope. Maybe they're just so mad that we're doing big eyeball crimes. I have a Xanathar paper deck. It's obnoxious, but I know it's obnoxious. Thank you to everybody who's let me play this deck uh, with them at a table. I also have this new Gaunti precon in paper. I played it with um, Ailey and Olivia and Jim from Spike Feeders on Elder Dragon hijinks. That was very fun. We did a little live stream. I guess we gotta hit them with a howdy. Listen, I can talk to myself for hours. 
But I'd rather play a game of Magic the Gathering. All right, we target them. We have done the crime. Oh, I'm being asked what my thoughts on Zoids are. They look awesome. I love mechanical animals. I wish I had Zoids toys growing up. I want some of the Zoids model kits too. Please stop roping. Okay, let's just fast forward to the end of the game. And look at that, we won! It's a shame about the salt rope. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you like seeing some crime with Gonti. They aren't the most efficient at doing crime, but I will say that this is a very fun card to play with things like Xanathar and Outrageous Robbery. Also, having access to green means you can definitely put in a bit more of a value pile rather than the average Demir deck, which is a lot more kill spell, counter spell, survive until you steal all of your opponent's cards, a much more control-based build. Gonti is very fun, though, and I will say a very, very fun card to play in Commander. I've actually already played the pre-con that this is a part of. Uh, I played that on Elder Dragon Hijinx. It was part of a live stream. If you'd like to check out the video, uh, you can look up Elder Dragon Hijinx on YouTube. They're a great channel. Our friends Ailey and Olivia run it, and they are the best. If you're looking for my deck list, though, uh, it's in the description of the video. And if you would like to suggest a commander to build, this was also a suggestion, uh, just let me know in the comments. Some people have asked for some of the new commanders, including Roxanne, Kellen, the Gitrog monster, and Obeka. And I'm hoping to get to all of those since there's a lot of spicy new brews on the horizon. Thank you all so much for watching and have a brutal day.